It was called the trial of the century, and it still is. The legendary Scopes Monkey Trial happened nearly 100 years ago, but it is relevant now more than ever. It foreshadowed today's culture wars and the fierce debates over free speech and academic autonomy, especially the vocal conflict over critical race theory in education. In the 1920s, the fervor of the fundamentalist movement swept the nation. Laws were passed banning the teaching of evolution in public schools. Religious leaders claimed it undermined the biblical story of man's creation and would destroy Christianity. So in Tennessee, a young school teacher, John Scopes, was arrested and charged with the crime of teaching his biology students about Darwin's theory of evolution. Well, the trial that followed was an epic battle over evolution versus creationism and science versus religion. The great fundamentalist leader William Jennings Bryan, a three-time presidential candidate, joined the prosecution team. His longtime nemesis, Clarence Darrell, the finest trial lawyer who ever lived, was incensed. He volunteered to defend the teacher in what the media dubbed the monkey trial, a public misconception that man descended from monkeys. Almost overnight, the small town of Dayton, Tennessee, where the trial was held, transformed into this carnival-like atmosphere. Signs went up stating, read your Bible. The Anti-Evolution League set up shop. Revival tents appeared, and street preachers with loudspeakers condemned the evils of Darwin and evolution, while vendors were hawking toy monkeys. A chimpanzee by the name of Joe Mendy, dressed in a plaid suit, paraded around town. Journalists the world over converged on tiny Dayton newsreel cameras, recorded the courtroom events that were then sent to movie houses everywhere. This was the first trial ever broadcast live on radio to a riveted nationwide audience. Americans were fascinated. Darrow argued that knowledge must never be submitted to a religious test, and he had a dozen esteemed scientists and theologians all ready to explain to the jury how evolution did not conflict with the Bible. But a biased judge would have none of it. He was determined to see Scopes convicted. Out of options and losing the case, Darrow did something daring and extraordinary. He called Brian, the prosecutor, to the witness stand as an expert on the Bible. And of course, Brian couldn't resist showing off his knowledge. Darrow gambled that he could discredit Bryant for believing that everything in the Bible should be taken literally. Fearing the courtroom might collapse under the weight of too many spectators, the judge moved the proceedings outdoors. So in front of thousands of people, Darrow cross-examined Bryant in what the New York Times described as the most amazing court scene in Anglo-Saxon history. I won't spoil the outcome. There are several unexpected twists and turns, but in the end, Darrow's brilliant arguments helped establish the legal bedrock on which our civil liberties depend today. Intellectual freedom, scientific advancement, and the indispensable proposition that no one should be told how to think. Well, the name of the book is The Trial of the Century, and it truly was.